Hello everybody and welcome to Provis Gaming. Let's try Generals and Rulers, developed by Hamsters Gaming. You should recognize that name, they brought us Evil Bank Manager, a game you guys seem to really enjoy the last time I played it on this channel. So when the developers reached out to me and said, hey, we have a new game, we'd like to sponsor you to try it out, well of course I'm going to say yes, how could I not? Now Evil Bank Manager, if you recall, was a game that utilizes the power of finance, investment, and maybe the military-industrial complex to manipulate the world stage and spread your banking influence across the globe. Basically, you are trying to rule the world through money. Generals and Rulers looks at that and says, what, math? Finance? Pa! That sounds like a game for nerds. You know what's way more efficient? Just tax the crud out of your population to fund a large war machine that you can use to conquer more people and tax them to fund an even larger war machine and rule the world through force. You know, the way God intended it. It is a map painter, pure and simple, and your goal is to snowball as quickly and as effectively as you can. Let's start up a new game. Ooh, look at the animations. They're upgrading. All right, there are four different campaigns to choose from. You can play in just Europe in 1207, just Asia in 1207, both in 1207, or both in 1750 for some reason. Not too sure why they chose these specific start dates, but I'm sure there's a good reason I can't think of. Let's play in 1750, though. That is a fun time period. Now, we need to choose our starting nation. There are quite a few to choose from, and I will say I think the difficulty is going to greatly affect your experience with the game. If you choose a nation that's already pretty large and powerful, like Austria, with a very high population, you're going to snowball out of control very rapidly, and it might be pretty easy. But at the same time, it's a good way to learn the ropes. Whereas if you play as a much smaller nation, like Yemen, for example, you're going to find that you have a bit more nuance to the strategy, where you want to uh, appease certain neighbors and still expand and snowball, albeit a little bit slower than before. In my case, I think I want to pick a nation that's very middle of the road in terms of difficulty, and I'm thinking we play as Prussia. Why? Because Prussia is OP. It's a meme at this point. So let's go ahead and start up a new game. There's Prussia. It is my country. And it is Hindu for some reason. I have no idea why that's the case. All right, there are a few different currencies that we want to keep track of. There's our gold, which is generated from taxes through population, and from trade with our neighboring nations. And the more they like me, the more money we get out of trade. The population has to live in different regions. And then we have a military that we can use to conquer more regions, which conquers more population, which gets more taxes, so we can have more gold, so we can hire more units, so we can conquer more regions, so we can get more population, and so on. You guys get the point. As I said, it's all about snowballing as quickly as you can. There's also something here called research points, which I'll show you in just a moment. So what do you do with your gold? Well, the gold is used for two different things. One, you can hire more units. Units, of course, are very important if you want to conquer more, uh, more territory. And what you're going to look for is the attack value and the cost of that unit. You're looking for the best attack to gold ratio that you possibly can find. And as far as I can tell, it just stacks all the attack power together. It doesn't really matter what units you pick up. Like, for example, I don't think there's a rock-paper-scissors effect where the cavalry are better against archers, who are better against infantry, and so on. In this case, cavalry are just objectively better than archers in every way, so we would want to hire a bunch of them, maybe some ships, maybe some trebuchets, and so on. And there's a hire all button down here so you can see how much power overall you are going to get. That's one thing you can do with your money. The second option is research. Let's go to the research tab here. Now, you can spend your money to hire a bunch of scientists, and the reason you would do so is it increases how much science you are generating per turn. Currently, we have 17,762. We can increase that by 2,538, and we're going to go ahead and do that right now. Science is phenomenally important for the development of your country. The more science you have in the early game, the more you're going to snowball. So I'm going to, for example, spend some of this to get a research cost reduction for the rest of the technology for the rest of the game. We could do this one level at a time for 5,000, or I'll do five levels for 36,812. And we're actually going to do this to get a 15% reduction on everything else. That's going to make it much easier for me to snowball going forward. I'm also going to increase the amount of taxes we can receive from all of our citizens. Maybe a little bit of extra trade, maybe a bit more of extra profit, which I assume is a modifier that affects both of the others. We're also going to reduce the cost of hiring new units by, let's say, 10%, and then increase the power of our cavalry by a couple of levels, maybe 15%. We're going to hire a spy. We're going to want to get some extra assassins that I can use. And I think that's more or less it. Maybe maybe a bit more taxes. I like money. Money is always good. And that is our opening move for our research. Okay? 
Now, that's important for a couple of different reasons. As I said, money is absolutely crucial. Money gets you more military, but it also gets you more science so you can snowball faster. The more money you have at the beginning of the game, the better off you are going to be. And money is important from your residents. So the goal right now is to get as much population as quickly as we can. I'm actually going to go ahead and also get a couple of extra diplomacy levels so I can kind of move up the diplomacy tier a little bit faster. So, as I said, we want to get more population. So we need to find somebody that we can bully pretty early on and get some of those extra pops. I'm thinking Mecklenburg makes a lot of sense. Let's go to the diplomacy screen right here. And you can see, if we sort by neighbors, they have over 3 million population, but only 4 regions. So they should be pretty easy for me to take on. But we have reasonably good relations with them right now. I'm going to go ahead and negotiate our way down to just a truce of only 1 star and say that our goal is to go to war with them. So every turn we're going to gradually be moving down. Uh, toward war. So in two turns or so, we should be at war with Mecklenburg. But we also do not want to provoke certain powerful neighbors like Austria. So I'm going to try to make a goal of drifting towards better relations with them. Same with the Holy Roman Empire. And maybe a little bit with the Polish-Lithuanian Union, though they seem to like me a little bit already, so I don't think I'm too worried about them. Yeah, this should be perfectly fine. And then we're just going to move on to the next turn and generate some more money and see what happens. Okay, you can see that we have upset Mecklenburg, so our relations have gone down by a star. But we have improved relations with Austria and the Holy Roman Empire a little bit, which is good because they don't tend to like aggressive expansion. Now, I do need to find out how many troops Mecklenburg has so I know how many more units I need to hire. One way we can do that... Did I hire a spy? I did. So what we can do is go to Reconnaissance, sort by neighbors, send our agent to Mecklenburg, and then we have to make a choice. Do we do a general espionage mission, which costs very little, but it gives you kind of a rough ballpark as to how many troops your enemy has. But the information can be wildly inaccurate. So I find it's better to spend the money for a full reconnaissance report and get as much information as you can. In this case, we can see they have practically nothing to their name. They should be total pushovers. So I'm just going to hire a little bit more cavalrymen. There's like a couple thousand more. There we go. And that should put me at a pretty big advantage. And then we're going to spend everything else we got on research, get more points, which we will use to get some more taxes, a little bit more trade, and a bit more profits and probably upgrade my cavalrymen at least another 10%. So now we're looking at a 15 over 90 ratio, which is pretty darn solid and makes my existing military just a little bit more effective than it was before. Next turn, we should be going to war with Mecklenburg. Okay, now here's something that weird that happens, and this seems to be a bug. The after heavy battles, the rulers of Prussia and Mecklenburg sat down to agree on secession of hostilities. That's not actually true because we haven't had any battles, and we're not at peace. That is actually telling me that we are now at war. So, a little bit of a weird, misleading message there, but either way, we are at war with Mecklenburg, which means we now want to attack them. I am going to hire a few more cavalry, just another couple thousand or so right there should be fine, and to send my units out to Mecklenburg, we have to go to the headquarters. This is where you can decide to send units on a landborn or a seaborn uh, invasion. In this case, I want to do a ground assault of Mecklenburg, and I'm going to select, let's say, 60% of my existing reserves to go and attack them. So that number goes down by a substantial amount. We can look at units in campaign. And a couple thousand cavalry have been sent to Mecklenburg. Another thing we can do, since we do have some assassins, is I can choose to send said assassins to Mecklenburg. And I'm going to choose to send 100% of these off to Mecklenburg. And what they're going to do is, in the middle of the night, try to sabotage as many of their units as possible. I have no idea how effective assassins are, because I don't get a report telling me how many they kill. But presumably they're pretty good, so I'm going to have them. They seem fine. I'm not really worried about this war at all, though, so we're going to spend everything else I've got in research and try to snowball a little bit faster, if at all possible. Can't quite afford the next uh, five levels or so of research costs, but we can do at least a few levels, so four more percent, making everything else just a little bit cheaper. Again, in the short term, that's not going to do me a lot of good, but in the long term, it's going to make me extremely powerful. Let's move on the next turn and see how things went. So, our assassins quietly cut down the troops in Mecklenburg, and then our army did demonstrate its power by capturing some territory. We can see here that we lost only a handful of men and killed eh, a couple hundred or so. We did grab one region off of Mecklenburg. So we are winning these fights currently. Should be pretty easy for us going forward. I don't really feel like we need to hire more units, so let's just go to research right now and hire a bunch more and get a little bit more research cost reduction. And then we're going to reduce the cost of units by another 5% and maybe increase their power by a whopping 15%. So we are definitely going to be winning our wars against Mecklenburg, and that ratio gets ever so slightly better. Now, one thing you can see is we are also starting to generate some rebels. This happens whenever you conquer new territory. They are citizens who straight up refuse to pay their taxes. They're sovereign citizens, and we can't allow that now, can we? 
So we can go to the headquarters, and from our existing reserves, send a handful of them to go and suppress the rebels. Which we will do right now, because I want to make sure I am still generating some money. You can see we're losing about 5,000 gold per turn. You can also see we're losing some money from war, which basically means every time you go to war with somebody, you're spending money to maintain the war effort. So, generally speaking, unless you're filthy rich, going to war with too many people can be an unnecessarily costly endeavor. In my case, I don't feel particularly worried about it. I am going to reduce the number of uh, rebels that are firing off by 5%, by the way. It just makes it a little bit easier to keep on top of things. And let's move on to the next turn. We did capture some more territory from Mecklenburg, killed a little bit more, and we can see that our population is going up. We're up by another million or so, which of course means even more taxation. Isn't it wonderful? I am going to hire some more troops now, because I'm pretty sure that we're very soon we're going to want to go to war with the state of Hanover. So let's go to our neighbors here and say that my goal is to start working our way toward a war. We could do that right now, but I don't really see the point, uh, because we're a little bit spread thin at this exact moment. So let's just play it a little on the safe side. For our research, can we get a little bit more, let's say, trade power for more money? And then we're going to go to the headquarters, and I'm going to sign a fair bit more, like let's say another 50% of the troops we just got, to continue suppressing those rebellions. Our units are still in our campaign in uh, Mecklenburg, though we could reinforce them with a few more if we wanted to play it a little bit safe. Let's move on to the next turn. Captured a fit very bit more territory. It looks like we captured the rest of their land. So now Mecklenburg is dead. That war is officially over. Awesome, I'm up to 13 million pops. State of Hanover, can I actually declare war on you right now? No, not quite yet. Next turn, however, we will be at war with them. And I think I've got plenty of units, but you know what? Let's be sure. Let's go to our neighbors. Let's go to the state of Hanover and send the uh, send the agent and do a quick mission. Okay, so you have you have a bit of troops, good couple thousand or so uh, units that actually pose a small threat. But then I have eleven thousand, so I think we're going to end up being just fine. Let's go ahead and assign fifty percent of them to keep putting down the rebels for a little bit, and then spend the rest of our money on tons and tons of research points. Uh, I would like to get even more taxes, like so, because taxation tends to be the best. And then a bit more trade. So we're going to generate a lot of extra money as of next turn. There we go. Let's do that now. And we are at war with Hanover just like that. You can see we are generating a lot more money per turn because those taxes and the extra population really do start to add up after a while. So let's go to the state of Hanover. I'm going to send, let's say, 75% of my existing units. That doesn't leave very much at home to defend, but that should be fine. And we'll continue suppressing the rebellions. Try to get another 3.5 million population or so. And then I'm going to send the assassins to also cut you down, just to guarantee that you are a little bit weaker and make it pretty easy for me to move in. Let's hire the rest of the scientists, like so. Um, I'm going to go for some unit cost reduction and then improve my profit by a couple of levels. And then maybe also upgrade my cavalrymen by another 5% to ensure that we win this war. We should see that we are indeed conquering some land. Polish-Lithuanian Union's getting a little bit peeved at me as we are an aggressive expander, but that's probably fine, right? And we are actually going to want to start upsetting the Holy Roman Empire, so I'm not going to continue trying to improve relations with them. Let's start working toward a basic truce so I can declare war on them at my leisure when that time comes. Continuing with the scientists, let's do that now. I can afford another 5% reduction in science costs, so that makes things easier going forward. And then, yeah, we'll just send a few more units to continue suppressing rebellions. Uh, they are starting to build up, but honestly, it's not that bad in terms of how much money you are gaining just from conquering all of this territory. Okay, we conquered a bit more. Holy Roman Empire is getting upset at me at the moment. We could speed that up if we want to provoke them a little bit by, let's say, assassinating some of their units. That would be effective, albeit a little bit mean-spirited. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and hire up some more troops because I think we are going to be going to war pretty soon, so that doubles the number of troops we have available. And then for research, uh, I guess... I guess we just increase our taxes, and again, by another 5% or so. And then send a lot of units to keep putting down these rebels until we are finished with the state of Hanover. But in the Holy Roman Empire, I'm going to go ahead and send some assassins and try to reduce their count by a substantial amount. Now, they do detect you every time, and it does reduce relations by doing so. I think I can only afford to do that like once, maybe twice, before they will automatically declare war on me. So I don't want to do that too much. But it does weaken them a little bit. So they're now down to just one star. Nope, not even that. Less than one star. So they're pretty mad at me at the moment. But we are conquering more land from Hanover. They only have one province left at the moment. So that should be easy enough for me to deal with. I'm not looking to provoke these guys any further than we already have. We may end up fighting Denmark instead since they are a pretty easy target. Uh, let's go ahead and hire a bunch more units just to play on the safe side in case we do get attacked. And then we'll spend the rest on some extra research. Uh, probably working on... Probably on a bit of trade, and then, yeah, increasing our cavalry effectiveness just a little bit more. Uh, for diplomacy, 
Do I want to just go ahead and attack Denmark right now, or do I want to attack the HRE? Let's find out how much the HRE currently has. I'm going to pull off of Hanover and send the agent there. Now, we don't have enough money right now, but next turn we can find out exactly how much uh, troops the Holy Roman Empire is stockpiling, because maybe we decide that we want to kill them. I don't know. Hanover is dead, though, so let's go to the reconnaissance. Send out our reports. We find out they have a fair bit of troops, actually. It's a pretty large army. They would be a little bit tougher for me to kill. But I think if we hire another 12,000 or so cavalrymen, we can probably make that work. Let's start working toward a war. I actually thought we were going to be able to declare war this turn, so I'm a little disappointed that I couldn't. Uh, let's send, let's say, 80% of our troops to go put down some more rebels. And then in research, um, let's go for, you know what, just straight up more power there. And... Um, Maybe a little bit of extra... You know, let's go for some population growth so that every turn our population starts growing passively by a very small amount, but over time it can add up into something nice. All right, next turn, and they are down to a truce. Next turn, we are going to be at war with the Holy Roman Empire. I'm going to go ahead and spend money on a bunch more research, and then we're probably going to reduce the cost of hiring some new units, then improve what I already have. 70% is pretty good, so now we have a very strong ratio here. If I want to hire a lot more cavalry uh, men next turn, we're going to be able to demolish the HRE in no time flat. Yeah, so the goal is to go to war as of next turn. And they have a lot of population, 14 million, so this will almost double me in size as I gradually fight this war. But we're also going to be peeving off a lot of uh, nearby nations, and if they attack me, we could be in a lot of trouble. So let's be kind of careful about that, shall we? For our research, I'm going to continue buying more scientists. Uh, we can probably get some more taxes by at least a couple of levels. Uh, it costs a lot to reduce the cost of your units. For the cost of reducing the cost of hiring new units by 5%, we could just increase our taxes by 25%. So I think that's always going to end up being a bit better, don't you? Let's go to our headquarters. For the Holy Roman Empire, I'm going to send, let's say, 75% of my existing units. And we'll save 10,000 back at home to put down rebels and also defend ourselves from attacks if we need to. Moving on to the next turn, is it going to be enough? It is. We do capture a couple of regions from the HRE and kill a lot of their militia for really not much cost on our end, which is nice. Austria, on the other hand, is starting to get a little angry, so we should probably try to improve our relations with them over time, if at all possible. But now we're gaining a, a fair bit of extra money as we continue to steal away some of his population. Um, I don't think I need to hire more units because we're already winning just fine. So let's focus mostly on getting some scientists. I think we will get probably some extra profit and a bit of extra trade, and then, yeah, improve our cavalry a little bit further, and then hire a few extra units that I'll be able to use to put down some of the rebels we are picking up right now. 50% right there should be enough. Then let's go to the HRE and send assassins to go and slice through the rest of their units. Again, I have no idea how effective this is, but if it is at all effective, it's probably totally worth it. As we continue to build up our military, though, we should start looking toward doing other wars at the same time if we can. So, for example, let's go to the army, hire a bunch more troops right now, 15,000, and we are going to attack Denmark. Declare a war against them right now. Go to Denmark, let's say 60% of the existing troops are going to go and fight them, 50% of the remaining go to put down rebels. So now we're fighting two wars at the same time, but ideally, if we can start having two, three, four wars at the same time, we're going to start growing very, very rapidly. I mean, that would be the goal, right? I'm pretty sure. So, okay. Uh, I think a bit more taxes are in order, and that's all I can afford at the moment. Something I am going to need eventually is the ability to do a seaborne assault, so I'll go ahead and do a couple of levels here. Denmark does have some islands. We are going to have to do a naval invasion at some point. I'll show you how that's going to work in a little bit, but let's move on to the next turn. Are we going to be winning some land from Denmark? Yep, yes indeed we are. We get one region from them, and four regions from uh, the HRE. That's certainly pretty nice. Austria is liking me a little bit better, so we're looking okay there. And I'm not looking to provoke the uh, Polish-Lithuanian Union too early on, though they probably are my next big target if we can make that work. Let's focus on a bit more science. And I'm going to reduce research costs by another 5% for everything else because, hey, it just goes a longer way. And then we're going to reduce the number of rebels that are firing up because they're starting to get a little bit annoying. We're losing 25,000 gold out of that right now, which I just don't consider to be acceptable at all. 50% of you, go here. And we should be able to still win this fight unless they are hiring a bunch more units. And gradually they do that. Like, uh, your AI opponents are going to be hiring more units, so it's entirely possible that at some point they are going to attack you, but even so. So we did conquer some more lands, but here's a weird thing that happens. Now, the HRE says, you know what? I don't see a point in fighting anymore, so I guess the war is over. And for some reason we look at that and say, oh, 
well, if you don't want to play anymore, I, I guess I guess we're not going to fight you anymore. It's kind of stupid to me, because it's almost like playing a game of tag as children, and you're about to catch the kid, and the kid's like, I'm not playing anymore, I'm not playing anymore, and you have to stop, right? That's the exact same concept. The good news is, it doesn't actually matter. We can just go to the HRE and say, nope, we're going right back to war. Just take it like a man, let me kill you, okay? Don't run away from me, just kindly plop over and die, all right? Sounds good. Now, jumping forward a tiny little bit, you can see that the Netherlands have decided to go ahead and declare war on me, and they actually successfully took some of my land. I didn't lose too many. They lost a lot of troops in the process, but yeah, they're actually trying to take something from me, which I find very unfortunate. So we're going to go ahead and go to the army, hire up a bunch more troops, and then we're going to just return the favor against the Dutch because for some reason they are full of themselves, and I don't appreciate that much at all. Denmark also decided, no, 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 we're not at war anymore, to which I said, yes, 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 we are. Now, the problem with Denmark is, uh, as I said, we are going to have some problems with uh, naval invasions in the near-ish future. So we will continue doing a ground assault against them for the time being, but if we go to Seaborn here... No, we can't actually do a uh, naval invasion yet. We need to wait one more turn, and then we'll be able to fight them. Uh, let's go ahead and suppress some more rebellions. Uh, move on to the next turn. We should find that we're going to be conquering land from the Netherlands, I assume. Let's see. Bavaria declares war on me now. Everyone wants to hate me. Ah, oh, it's like it's the cool thing to do nowadays. All right, let's go ahead and hire up some more troops so I can ensure that we are going to win. Now, about that naval invasion I was talking about. So if we go to Seaborn here, we can see we can send a naval invasion. Why not? Uh, I have to have access to the sea. I do have access to the sea, so I'm not sure why it's acting as if I can't do a naval invasion on Denmark. Sometimes this works and sometimes it doesn't. It's a little bit weird in that way. All right, well, if you're going to be that way, then let's go ahead and send everything we got toward Bavaria. Because they're full of themselves now, and I don't appreciate it at all. Maybe I need to hire some more ships. That could be. Let's see. Let's go to the next turn, get some more money, and see if I can get some more ships and do a na uh, naval invasion. We did conquer land from the Netherlands, the Holy Roman Empire, and Bavaria. So we know that that's working out just fine. Let's hire some ships, and then a bit more cavalry, just to ensure that I am nice and strong. Go to headquarters, Seaborn. There we go. Now I can do a Seaborn assault of Denmark. So I'm going to send, let's say, 18% of my existing forces to Denmark. And we'll do that a couple of times, because I don't feel like that's going to be enough as it is. And they will go and land on some island or some shore somewhere to try and get me a ground assault against Denmark in the future. We'll also go ahead and send a bunch of troops to the... Uh, sorry, the assassins to the uh, HRE, just to kind of cut them down a little bit more since we're starting to have some trouble. And then go put down a bit more rebels. And I'm going to go ahead and spend the rest of my money here on some scientists. So we'll continue jumping forward a little bit. I'm not going to show you the guys exact same things over and over again. It's a lot of rinse and repeat. But you guys should be getting the picture now. Just snowball out of control, fight as many wars as you can at the same time without actually losing. And you can see in a very short amount of time, we're already up to 21 million population, generating a lot of extra gold. And that only continues to grow my power faster and faster as time goes on. Jumping forward a little bit more, you can see that we are now at war with basically all of our neighbors, or at least who were until they said, No, please, please give us the peace, to which I say, Nine, you must die! But anyway, yeah, we're now at war with basically every neighbor that I'm currently touching with, apparently the exception of the United Kingdom. It's gonna take me a little while to chip through the rest of these guys, but we'll get through them soon enough. Uh, yeah, I mean, <laughs> we just keep stacking on the units, and what the heck are they gonna do? Not a ding-dong-dang thing. We can keep reducing the cost of more of my units so they get even cheaper than before. Now we have really good cavalry coming in. Look how many more I'm getting. It's amazing. Now, I think it does actually cost you some population in order to field those troops, which is a nice touch. But uh, obviously, once you're getting into the 31 million side of things, another 40,000 cavalry isn't exactly the big deal. All right, now let's see. I can't do the Seaborn Assault thing against Sweden because I just took the rest of their land that I can reach by, you know, land, but I suspect next turn we'll be able to do that. So I suppose in the meantime, let's just go and assassinate all of Austria, because they're being a little bit annoying. Well, as you can see, we are continuing to blob like madmen. The color red is spreading all across the world, and I'm not gonna lie, it suits the world. It's a good color on them. People keep trying to tell me that they see no point in hostility. Look, it's really not my problem that you don't understand the point of warfare, all right? It's mainly for the wanton slaughter. Okay? And if you can't appreciate that, then really that ain't my problem. I'm gonna kill you all the same. Anyways, Ehu, so we are spreading pretty well through the UK, starting to get up here to Portugal. Uh, apparently we're now pushing into proper Russia and Siberia through the King Dynasty, since they want to get in my way right now. But I've gotten to a point where I'm not even bothering really to do any more research. We're getting tons and tons of money. The units that I care about are already maxed out. 
And aside from getting maybe a bit more population, that's kind of all I care about, but I'm getting 658,000 research per turn. So all that seems to matter to me at this point is stacking up a few hundred thousand more of the cavalry so we can win these fights even more resoundingly. Now, one thing that I do not know for sure, and I suspect it's the case, but I don't know. Uh, maybe when I go to next turn, I'll show you exactly how this works. But uh, when we do a fight and we win a battle, it'll tell me that we took a certain number of regions from the other nation. I don't know if that is like a random number generator sort of thing and we just get lucky and get a lot or maybe we don't or maybe it's dependent on just how much you are overwhelming the opponents. If you have several times their strength, do you take more regions than if it was a close battle? So case in point with France right here, we took two. Against Austria, again, we took two. Naples, we took two. Well, this is a bad example here. Three against the UK. I've seen us take up as much as like eight. There's ten from the King Dynasty this turn. So, I don't know, like, is it just because we are grossly overwhelming them? And if that's the case, then yeah, we should always be hiring a bunch more troops now that we've hit this kind of critical mass with our research, we don't want to spend any more money on this, and instead, just focus everything we've got on extra reinforcements so we can win huge swaths of land instead of barely inching forward. Now here's something interesting, once you get to about 50 turns into the game, it gives you this little screen telling you if you quote-unquote won or not, but you can continue. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and say this is actually more of the halfway point of the game Because you can continue for another like 50 turns or so then it really is the end of the game And then you really will be prevented from continuing But in the meantime, we can take a look here at the ranking and see that yeah by a long shot all across the board We are we are ranking number one nobody even comes remotely close But I ain't done yet. We haven't even gotten to the freaking Pacific Ocean if I can't even get to the Pacific What kind of an empire really am I? So we're fighting, what, like, 14 wars now or something stupid like that? And people keep attacking me. There's definitely an aggressive expansion mechanic in the game somewhere. They're like, oh, these people are attacking all their neighbors. I don't think I much like that. We should fight them too. To which I say, haha, I make like 10 million gold per turn. I can field an army larger than five of you at once every turn. So by all means, keep attacking me, Ashanti. We'll see how well that freaking works out for you. And I haven't had to spend, like, any money on any research in a while, and we've got, like, all the good money making stuff coming in. I can even get the free recruitments now, too. Who even cares? Heck, I might even start upgrading my archers because I'm getting them for free. I know, it seems crazy, but, like, I might as well just upgrade them, right? Probably. Oy vey. I wish there was a way to, like, zoom out the map a little bit more, though. Because we're obviously fighting on a lot of different grounds right now, and I kind of would like to be able to see all of them kind of at once if that were just possible, but uh, no, does not appear that that is going to be possible. Oh well, so sad. Oh, that's weird. Okay, I stand corrected. Apparently there's not 100 turns, there's like 60 in total. So they give you 50 turns to figure out just how well you did, and then 10 more turns just to kind of wrap things up if you want. Well, okay, I'll admit this is not as good as some of my test games. We were able to conquer the majority of Europe, just missing a bit of Greece, Macedon, and Thrace. And then we did push ourselves all the way over toward the Atlantic. So all of proper Russia is basically under my control. Started to work our way down toward the Indian Peninsula, fighting the Ottomans, getting around Georgia, and also taking a pretty large chunk of Africa. All in all, that worked out pretty well. Prussia uber duper strong. Of course, keep in mind that had we picked a smaller nation with not nearly as much population, the game would have been a lot slower for us because we couldn't have gotten as much money to build up a large army to bully our neighbors or to get enough science going to actually make us a powerhouse. You'd have to play a very different game if you are playing a tiny nation, let's say the island of Cyprus as an example. You can also imagine this game would be very interesting in a multiplayer setting, which is supported in the game, where two people would pick a nations of uh, a relatively similar size and strength and then race each other to see who can grow the largest by the end. That actually does sound kind of fun. But either way, guys, this is Generals and Rulers in a nutshell. I hope you guys found this video informative and entertaining in some way. And a big thank you to developers for the sponsorship. I really do appreciate it. Thank you all for watching. Hope you enjoyed. If so, then I would ask you to hit that like button, leave a comment, and subscribe, and then notify bell. And of course, check out the Steam link in the description down below. My name is Provis, and I will see you guys next time.